Hello, my name is Duncan and welcome to one of my hot takes. This hot take is about the 330-300 rule. So quickly, I need to explain the 330-300 rule in case anyone watching this hot take is unfamiliar with it. This is a rule created by Professor Cecil Kanin and Dyke uh, in 2022 with the purpose of setting a standard for the provision of green spaces and urban forestry in a town or city or another urban area. It was introduced in an academic publication and has quickly gained popularity, probably in part because Cecil Kalindike is a very well-known authority on urban forests, having held a professorship for some time at the University of British Columbia before coming and returning back to Europe. Uh, the simple metrics are to check whether there was sufficient provision of urban greenery in the following three ways. The three, how many trees can you see through the windows where you live? Ideally, you should be seeing three or more trees through that window. 30, what is the canopy cover of your local residential neighborhood? Ideally, it would be at or above 30% canopy cover. And how far is it for you to walk? How far do you have to walk to enjoy a local public open space of at least half a hectare in size, or if you like, 50 metres by 100 metres in size? Ideally, that distance shouldn't be more than 300 metres from where you live. And that's it. There's just three simple metrics to gauge how much greenery an urban resident should be experiencing and fairly easily uh, measured metrics too. Now, it is important to cast a critical eye on any idea, of course, particularly at degree or MSc level. So is the 330-300 rule too simplistic, perhaps, or too unrealistic? But it's not hard to start picking holes in the simplicity of the rule, particularly in relation to seeing three trees through your window at home. First, does not the quality and the size of the trees matter at all? Large trees are bound to have a greater impact on a resident's well-being when viewing those trees. And trees that are in health or very small in scale compared with the surrounding townscape may well give rise to negative feelings uh, in the viewer. Uh, this idea of uh, quality uh, carries across to the other two metrics as well. Because uh, for the 30% canopy cover, is it fairly distributed across the neighbourhood and is it of good quality? Including large trees and is the collection of trees in a sustainable form. And for the public green spaces, even if they are within 300 metres of where one lives, we must ask whether there are desirable places to visit. Now that factor comes down to their qualities, facilities and how much agency you have in that space. For example, if that space suffers from regular antisocial behaviour and has rundown facilities, there may be little gain from being near to, living near to that space as a resident. Now, in terms of this rule being a useful measure of urban livability, there are some big issues with historic towns and cities. My image on this slide is a part of the historic town of Pistoia near to Florence in Italy. Like many European towns and cities, there's a historic core or center with many old buildings built at a time when provision for tree cover just wasn't a consideration. Old stone buildings, narrow streets, large churches, market halls, townhouses. Well, you know, that makes finding viable places for tree establishment pretty difficult. And uh, you know, trees, if you planted them, could also detract from the historic features of the town or city. Planting in some trees in some compact cities and centres may seem hard, but it's far more difficult to retrofit large public green spaces in such areas where land is very expensive and there is already a high density of high value buildings that couldn't be removed to make space for a park. Uh, the rule about seeing at least three trees through your window is probably grounded on the idea of Western style suburbs. In many cities, the default accommodation isn't a house, but an apartment in a high-rise building. For sure, if you're on the 
30th floor of an apartment block, you're very likely to have a view of three or more trees, as your view may well extend across a whole city district. However, you do not have a close up and intimate view of those trees in terms of their foliage detail, their flowers and so on. So for high rise residents, this rule would need to be revised in the light of the data. Another aspect of being realistic for this rule is that for my country, the United Kingdom, the average town or city has tree cover around 15 to 20 percent. Only a small proportion of urban conurbations in England, for example, reach that 30 percent canopy cover metric. As many local authorities managing their urban forests are currently struggling to maintain their current level of tree cover in our towns and cities, the proposition of increasing canopy cover by 50 or 100 percent of its current level may not be financially viable. Considering the reality of green space provision, one needs to be able to visit it, use it and feel comfortable in that space to gain the health benefits from it. This comes down to what I would call agency and the quality of the space to a great extent. And this often requires substantial investment in these open spaces, something that some local authorities struggle to budget for. OK, so what have we learned from this hot, hot take? First, although it's easy to criticise the simplicity of the 33300 rule and to highlight some obvious limitations, perhaps the simplicity of the rule is one of its greatest features. Most people can understand it very quickly and the numbers involved are easily remembered. 33300. We're likely to be hearing about this rule in for urban forestry circles for the next couple of decades at least, I think, because it has captured the interest of many. Second, this rule is evidence based rather than a mere suggestion. Achieving the 33300 rule is linked to improved human health, physical health and mental health, that is, as outlined by its author. And third, academics do recognise that there are limitations to this rule. They're not living in an unrealistic world. For example, a paper published in the same year, 2022, has pointed out that a city a city like Barcelona cannot provide the green spaces at the intervals between residencies that would be needed to fulfill the 300 metre metric. And that probably most compact city designs cannot accommodate all three requirements of the rule, particularly the latter two metrics. To me, the 33300 rule does seem to best relate to wealthy Western style suburbia and not the reality for many cities around the world. Saying that, perhaps it's better to have an urban greening target to aspire to rather than to aim lower. Thanks for listening to my hot take. I'll talk again soon.